So if you're trying to figure out how to build a septic tank on your homestead or out in the middle of nowhere where you have no electricity and you just want to get something done quick, watch this video. So today we're somewhere in the Suwannee River. The Suwannee River is a river that runs through South Georgia southward into Florida in the southern United States. The plan for today is to build a septic tank and stay under $300. If you ever want to figure out how to install some sort of septic system, this is going to be a solution for you. I want you to watch this video. Go ahead and introduce yourself and tell us what we're doing here today. Hey, my name's Belly. We're putting in a little small septic tank. This is basically when we go camping on the weekends. You got somewhere where, you know, you use a toilet. You don't have to constantly right. keep on going out to the middle of the woods. As the wastewater enters the tank through the inlet line, the sludge will sink to the bottom while a layer of greased scum will remain on the top. From this point, wastewater is distributed into the absorption area via perforated lateral pipes. The wastewater is then filtered through a gravel or stone trench and subsequently discharged through the sand and soil layers below. How do we set this up? What is this right here? So this is just a 300 gallon industrial tote. And all it is is we use three inch PVC. We have a three inch clean out here, which turns into a 90 degree elbow, which only drops down about a foot or so. And on the opposite side, Oh, it's pretty easy to move around. Yeah, it's pretty light. Anybody can do it, really. All we have here is a, a four-way T. Goes in with a 90-degree elbow. A PVC three-inch, just like this. Goes inside. And it has a drop pipe that comes down about 18 inches down. As long as the drop pipe on the discharge side is lower than the inlet side, uh, it'll work because the solids in a septic tank float to the top and your liquid, which is why your drop pipe goes down 18 inches, your liquid will come out the discharge side to your drain field. That's what these two pipes on the side are for. This is just a three inch clean out. If we ever had a problem with plugage or whatnot, we can come in here and clean it out if we had to. And the way we fasten this is we just rudimentary put a two by four underneath here and screwed it to this metal framing and zip tied the pipe to it and then used a can of spray foam and spray foamed around it. And that's pretty much all you have to do. And then your drain fill. Okay, so how many of these you have? Two. So you have two of these, and how far, how, how far, how, where are you, 10 foot? Uh, 10 foot long. And we just pick them up Let's at Lowe's? Coop bring here. Yeah, just pick them up at Lowe's. They're about 60 bucks. But these just go on this side like that, and then you'll bury your drain fill out this way on okay. each side, and just fasten that with a uh, big hose clamp. Well, that's it, and you have two of them. Pretty two simple. Of them. Really simple. So it just naturally flows out then. Yeah. So right now, it looks like we are going to be, they're already hand trenched uh, where the outlet is right over there. And we're going to go ahead and drop that bucket right over there, right? Yep. That's I mean, it. drop that. Yeah, your tote. The tote right directly over here in this little area. Got the excavator over here. Do you guys know how much I love Kubota? JCB, I'm waiting for you guys to send me one. And then um, we're gonna put the drainage somewhere right around here, right, to go out since so it should be only about ten feet. And right. and where we're located is very very sandy soil, so um, we have no problem with drainage whatsoever. Our water table is very very high where we're at. Let's go ahead and get started with it. Okay, so first thing I was doing with the excavator is I had the throttle down extremely low for the sake of, I, I'm really close to a lot of other elements, uh, like RVs, trees, other walls, and there's a lot of people around. So you wanna make sure that throttle's completely down and you take your time when you're digging and you try to make those uh, digs and those scoops completely as efficient as possible. So you're not really making any mistakes or overcorrecting anything.
Okay, so he is making sure that the drainage is pitched. What kind of degree pitch are you looking at on that? One eighth of an inch to the foot. Okay, so you want to pay attention to this piece. This is important. If you pick it up, I should have about an inch down there at the end of my level. Somewhere around there. All right, that's probably a half an inch, so that gives me an eighth of an inch to the foot. So that way the poop runs down with the water and the water don't outrun the poop. Because if you go too much, the water will outrun the poop. And then your poop will sit in there. So it's down there. That's an eighth of an inch to the foot, guys. I'm glad we had the help we had today in order to build this because I'll tell you what, I was definitely not the expert there today. Normally when digging, I do not recommend having people next to or inside the hole where you're digging. It just so be that the gentleman there was kind of used to that sort of thing. But for me, this was actually the first time I actually was excavating any dirt with someone that close to it so i was very hairy on those controls and try to make it to where every movement mattered the measurement he's taking here is from the bottom of the tote to the top portion of the pipe that was the input bring me about two or three more but try to get them back over in this corner i'll stand out of your way the big concern here is making sure that the angle of the flow of the debris was going to constantly flow away from the inlet of the sewer. So as the water would flow flow out, it would completely flow in a downward direction at all times. So he was pitching everything all the way from the beginning. What did you say? Two more. I'm watching you. This guy was really busting my balls over here, but it was all fun and games. It was good stuff. So once we had the bottom of the hole leveled out and pitched to the proper size and angle, we were then able to bring over the tote and drop it into the hole, which fit absolutely beautifully here. And having that excavator really helped. All I did was hook up some chains to the top of the bucket and onto the side and just lowered it right in there. I mean, yeah, two guys could have probably handled it, but when you got an excavator, use the tools if you got them. Hold up right there. Hold up. Down. All right, it's in there. It's in there. I was pushing down on the back of the tote in order to give it a little bit more of a pitch. All right, that's good. In this next couple of clips, we are now moving on to digging out the drainage field here where we're going to be putting two 10 foot drainage strips that we picked up from Lowe's, which I think came out to be about 60 bucks per uh, one. So all in all, it was really easy to install here and getting it to the proper depth was when in which it was properly being pitched to as well was also imp important. So here you see us just digging it completely out, getting ready to put the drainage field in. Here is Tim adding some of the 90s here to the T that was coming out of the, the tote in order to hook up the drainage field. Okay, so as we're putting in the septic tank, uh, the, it's very important, one of the first things you have to do is when you're putting it in, this is a mistake I made, to stop it from collapsing in, it's filling it with water. A lot of the other YouTube videos I've seen had no mentioning about it whatsoever. You know, and, it, and it's, it is the, the thing is like when you fill it back up with dirt, what's gonna happen is that dirt's gonna start pressing in. People put like uh, carpets around it, which I did on my septic tank too. But um, the way I would say is fill it up with water, that way it weighs down. It pushes as much as it can down, and then when you fill it up with dirt, it all becomes nice and even. Now what we're also doing is setting up the drainage field. We picked up some drainage pipe from Lowe's, two, 10 foot, and they're completely teeing out, and there's two of them that are running in. So from inside comes in, the hard material sits up high, and then, and then exhausts out to the septic field. And there you have it. We're gonna go ahead and fill it up and cover it up. But all in all, it's been really easy and pretty uh, self-explanatory on a budget. And that's what I recommend. Here you find us again, going ahead and 
adjusting the pitch on this just a little bit more. That's got fall on it now, Timmy. Oh, yeah. All He's right. Good now. Go ahead and blame it on the operator. They were yapping at me because I didn't take out all the roots when I was digging. Can't make everybody happy. Every redneck has some duct tape in his truck. Can't beat that. I was trying to be really careful here that I didn't crush the actual drainage field here so I was operating right in the middle between them so I can I could push the dirt right back over it without really put a lot of weight on it I tell you what man putting water inside the tote before we covered everything back up made this job ten times easier I mean I've done this before but this is definitely something I didn't do before Reason why you see us using a garden hose over here and dirt is so we can flush out any of the air pockets that may be underneath of the tote. So, you know, nothing's sitting in there, nothing's gonna cave it in, and it's gonna pack in properly. Just slow, 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 taking our time, make sure I don't crush anything. This excavator is definitely not forgiving if I hit something with it. So if you liked today's video and you enjoyed the content and it helped you out, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button and I will talk to you and see you on the next video.